All in, he said. I could sense them in the distance. The rattle of the ball. The snap of the cards. A whisper of romance. A laugh. Some were serious. Some were excited. But it was an easy call. Kia ora Canterbury and welcome to Canterbury Live on Monday the 17th of November. I hope you survived the, the big week that was last week. There were so many wonderful things on and I hope you had a great day on Saturday at the races. If you did, maybe had a little cheeky collect. I actually did. Paid for the kids' pizza on Saturday nights. So that's not too bad, is it really? Now, coming up on today's show, we head out to Marion College. A great option for your young ladies potentially for next year, and CDHB, Canteen Healthy Options, thanks to Nicola Freyer. And Phyllis is back here, Phyllis Brown, talking about Tai Chi. So that'll be interesting, shall we do some nice moves and relax us all? But first up, very exciting news. Gorillas are coming to Arana Park. They are the most beautiful creatures, and we're so fortunate that we're actually going to be able to see them up close and personal, maybe not too close, here at Arana Park. And I'm joined by Nathan Hawker to tell us all about it. Very exciting times. Very exciting. Lots of smiles around the team at Arana Park. Yeah, most definitely. It's our <laughs> biggest project ever, and they're just cool animals. So very much looking forward to having them here. Quite an ambitious project though, wasn't yeah, it? most definitely. It's, it's our biggest ever. It's, uh, to put it in figures, it's a $6 million project and in 37 years that's how much the zoo's cost to build so far. So it's a huge undertaking, but it's a first for New Zealand, so it's uh, great to be able to have them here in Christchurch. So why was a passion so much there to bring gorillas to Christchurch then? Sure, we actually went through a team planning exercise to rank what our next animal would be and that was all against our mission yeah. and gorillas came out top basically scoring 100% on each measure and so yeah. because of that we, we decided to progress. It's a lot of feasibility work to ensure that we could deliver them but yeah just the excitement based around those animals is huge so how could we not? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All animals are, are very precious, but the gorillas are something special, and I guess need a special home. Most definitely. When they arrive. And we're building one. <laughs> they're, um, they're a critically endangered animal, so we'll be joining zoo based breeding programs for them. But yes, we're currently part way through construction of this massive habitat. It's a $6 million project, and we still very much need to fundraise for it. We've got around $2 million uh, yeah. in round figures to still raise. So the people of Canterbury can still help us out. Yeah, yeah. and so they should. We've got some wonderful um, images now, though, a bit of a taste of. So this is the building of the habitat. Yeah, so this is as at today. This is how it looks so far. So this is the outdoor exhibit for the gorillas at this end and right down the far end is the outdoor exhibit for orangutans which will uh, arrive about one year later. How and in cool. the middle is their house. Oh. This boy's called Fataki. He's one of the boys that's going to come across to see us. So oh, he's immense. Beautiful. He's stunning, isn't he? He is absolutely gorgeous. He's around 12 and this is his little brother Fuzu. So Literally, it's his little brother? Little brother, oh. yes. And there's a third one coming called Mahali. He lives at a different zoo at the moment, but he's also their younger brother. He'll be reintegrated to these two and then come across together with three of them next year. Unbelievable. It's massive, isn't it? Yeah, it's a huge exhibit. Um, this is an artist's impression of how it's going to look. This is looking at the gorilla area. So as you've seen from the photo that we mm. just showed before, there's a little bit of growth to happen, which will happen shortly. We've just seeded grass this week, which is actually a, a massive thing. We need to be able to ensure we grow good grass for the animals. Yeah. And this is how it'll look inside. Be because they're animals that need a warm climate, yeah. um, particularly in the Christchurch winter, there'll be indoor viewing rooms for these animals. So visitors will get that close to That is very views. cool. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. That's amazing. Wow, we... I mean, that's, a, that's very innovative, isn't it? To yeah. Actually, the inside. I think the only time I've seen this, a, you know, maybe in Australia where they've got um, the polar bears and things For like sure. that. But mm. that is just stunning. But yes, you do need the money, though. That's, that's the right. key, isn't it? It is at the moment. So yeah. people can help via Give a Little. We're obviously listing our project on that website. Um, or, or obviously, people can contact us direct. But any and every amount helps hugely towards this project. So when do these beautiful creatures arrive? Sure, well the exhibit timeline is March 2015, so not only is it a massive project to build, but it's got a very ambitious time frame. Mm. In terms of our critical path timeline, it's right on track, so we're doing very well at present. The, the contractors are doing perfectly well, uh, cool. and so the gorillas would arrive soon after that. And we would base the opening 
based on the animals. So right. it would depend yep. how well they are acclimatised. They're, they're very interesting animals to manage and mm. it'll take them a little bit to adjust to their new home. And it will be, and of course Sydney, well two of them are coming from Sydney aren't they, That's from right. Taronga Zoo. Yes. Um, the climate's very different though isn't it? Yeah it's a lot warmer over there so hence the indoor, indoor viewing room for visitors but also the indoor playrooms for the animals here to make sure that it's nice and warm and that they're comfortable. God. So in regards to the donations, apart from give a little, um, you also want the big, big give a bigger little really, don't you? Of the bigger, <laughs> bigger donations. Do they just contact you directly at Arana Park than if we're actually interested in potentially doing this for our business? Most definitely. That, that's the easiest way. Get in touch. We love to talk to people. We can take them down and show them the exhibit so far. Get them enthused about the project. So if people contact us, that, that's the best way we can start discussions. Why should we support this cause, gorillas. I mean, I think they're the most beautiful creatures. And if you've ever watched any documentaries, they are just so intelligent and just entice and draw you in. Mm. But why do you think, Nathan? Of, of course, as you say, they are impressive animals. They are, we think they're the world's most impressive primates. So mm. f firstly, it's a, it's a first for New Zealand, so it's a great thing for Christchurch and Canterbury. We think it's not just good for the zoo, but we're adamant that it's going to do great things for Christchurch and help drive people to the region. So we think after all that Christchurch has been through that, you know, this is a really good positive indicator that we're here to stay for the long run. So yeah. it gives something really interesting for people to come and see. Awesome. Obviously, as part of a zoo-based breeding program, Program where we're looking after these critically endangered animals too. So Good on you. Well, reasons. keep in touch. <laughs> we definitely want to get up and close with those beautiful gorillas and all the best to you and the Pleasure. team. Thank you. Stay with us after the break. We catch up with Nicola Freire from the CDHB. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs for more mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them, they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice, see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Come on down to Fairy Mead Golf. Care for a game of paintball? How about some swings on the old driving range? or on our par three nine hole golf course. Test your skills on the mini golf course or have a go at the air gun shooting range. Then relax at the Wow Cafe with one of our super succulent Wow Burgers. Whether you want to perfect your swing or are looking for a fun family day out, come down to Ferrymead Golf, 50 Ferrymead Park Drive, right next to the Ferrymead Heritage Park. Undergone home renovations? Looking for that special something to complete a room? Look no further than the Hitching Post. Their extensive range ensures you can find that special something. From plasma cut metalwork, to candles, artwork, weather vanes, or even a customised gate. So come on down to the Hitching Post, 722 Marshland Road. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! Well, the school canteen is a very important part of any children's world, you know. Mum can have some money for the canteen. But uh, CHB are bringing us, thankfully, some healthy options. Hi, I'm Nicola from the CDHB and today I'm going to be talking about school canteens and how they can promote those healthy items. It's all very well to um, want to put them onto your menu uh, but you've got to have people buying it for the business to actually be a success in the canteen to keep going. Uh, and as a parent I'm sure many people also know that just, just trying a food for the first time it might not necessarily be a hit. When you have a young child, you, it's recommended that you actually try foods um, up to 10 times just for them to get used to that new flavour and that new idea. So um, it's a good thing for canteens as well for the whole school community to support the introduction of a new item. 
uh, long enough for them to not lose money on it while the, while the students are getting used to the healthy item. So I've just got a few ideas here today, just to um, ways to introduce those new foods and actually um, keep them going in the canteen and hopefully gain popularity uh, with the students. So the first one we've got here is uh, combos. So we're all well aware of, of your combos. They're available in most takeaway shops. And uh, so obviously they're a, a very good idea for marketing. Uh, so I would recommend that school canteens try this one as well. And many Christchurch ones will actually already do. So it might be at the beginning that you uh, make a combo that includes perhaps a small amount of something that um, was more traditionally on the menu and perhaps was a little bit more unhealthy. Um, but if you pair that up with something healthy and then um, that introduces that new healthy item and it, it's linked to something that perhaps is popular as well. So here I've got um, an example of that which is just a bottle of water, um, a beautiful fresh sandwich and just a mini cookie. So I've used the mini cookie there rather than the giant cookie. Uh, obviously it's healthier to have a, a smaller size there. So that's sort of the introductory example. Um, then once you've got things rolling uh, with the combos and perhaps a, a bit of a flavour in the school for buying the healthy options, you can start giving a good deal for, th for these combinations. So the other one we've got here is a beautiful fresh salad wrap um, and an, serve that with an apple muffin and even a fresh apple as well. Um, and again, water or another type of drink. That's just a couple of examples of combos. Another good idea is to mimic something that's traditionally perhaps an unhealthy food. Um, and don't even use the H word, I would recommend. Don't say, oh, we've got this new healthy item in the school canteen. Just sell it as a, a great new fresh idea. So I've got just a traditional burger here. Uh, and here is a beautiful, this one looks delicious, I think. Lots of fresh vegetables in there. Uh, a nice piece of meat and some cheese. Uh, so I wouldn't even call that healthy. I'd just sell that as the latest idea and I think that would go racing out the door. And then another one we've got here, um, something like fried rice, or you could, if you serve pasta, all that sort of thing. Uh, especially at summer, uh, during the summer, with plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables around. Uh, if Whatever you can get at a reasonable price that week in the canteen, Add that to these carbohydrates, the, the pasta, the rice, uh, that might traditionally just be a, a, a fried rice dish. Add plenty of vegetables, gives heaps of colour and, and looks amazing. So obviously this, this dish is not a one serve, it's just to show you an example there. Uh, but also goes really nicely with different sauces that the students like. They, they do like the um, sort of honey soy sauces and the um, satay sauces are very popular also. Right, so then lastly I just wanted to talk about um, the theme days, which are really popular in school canteens. Um, so the first one here, and I've got a hat to go with this because I think it, if you play the part in your school canteen, I think this is going to really drive sales. So this is my Halloween costume for this year, and I'm selling it with ghost chips. And I'm sure lots of young people will know what ghost chips are from the, the uh, popular ad on TV. So these are a low fat chip, they've actually got the Heart Foundation tick and they're baked in the oven served with a little bit of light sour cream. So a lot better than a more traditional deep fried chip. Okay, get rid of that. <laughs> the other idea, if you can do it cheaply, I'm sure everyone's been to the $2 shops and got the, the Lay's. If there's fresh fruit and vegetables available at a good price, a great fruit salad with a really funky name, everyone at the canteen wearing one of these and it just gives a different feel for the whole idea and uh, makes it a bit more popular and a bit more fun. Another idea therefore is your nachos, something that's a bit of a staple but if you match it up with a, with a um, Mexican theme it's a bit more fun. I haven't added the beans today but you can add the beans in these trays in a smaller version, great for actually serving individual sizes. A couple of other ideas there, just to promote these ideas. Remember, the whole school uh, is encouraged to try and back these ideas. So some of the things that schools can do to help the canteen is promoting different deals they do in the school notices, if they have each day or each week, sending something home to parents about it, about an opportunity to buy a healthy meal. And I know a lot of parents like to know when something healthy is coming up so that the children can actually have money on those days. Thinking of really neat names for these sorts of things and just looking at the availability of, of those different products. Other things that might help you from the school is use different areas of the school. An art class might do a promotional uh, poster for you. 
Uh, there could be all sorts of ways in the school that you can promote this. Teachers could give rewards that could be canteen vouchers for good behaviour at school. There's all sorts of things if you just think outside the square. So we've actually got a canteen group in Christchurch that meet once a term. So if anyone from your school who runs a canteen would like to come along and join the group, uh, contact details are on the bottom of the screen. Wax on, wax That's off, and Phil <laughs> Phyllis has now stopped. After the break, we find out about Tai Chi. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs from More Mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice see More Mobility corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Undergone home renovations? Looking for that special something to complete a room? Look no further than the Hitching Post. Their extensive range ensures you can find that special something. From plasma cut metalwork, to candles, artwork, weather vanes, or even a customised gate. So come on down to the Hitching Post, 722 Marshland Road. Come on down to Fairy Mead Golf. Here for a game of paintball? How about some swings on the old driving range? Or on our par 3 nine hole golf course? Test your skills on the mini golf course or have a go at the air gun shooting range. Then relax at the Wow Cafe with one of our super succulent Wow Burgers. Whether you want to perfect your swing or are looking for a fun family day out, come down to Ferrymead Golf, 50 Ferrymead Park Drive, right next to the Ferrymead Heritage Park. Why did you like our moves, Phyllis? Yes. No wax on, wax off? No, we're not waxing on, we're not waxing <laughs> on. We're waving the clouds. Waving hands the clouds. in the clouds, wiping the table. I like the it. the window, wiping the table. I like it. And then your son's not going to walk in <laughs> no, anytime soon. he's not. He's not. <laughs> no. Hey, Tai Chi. Yes. And you've been doing it for a year now. That's I pretty have. cool. I have. It was, it was a really lovely gift to myself because I, I, I have, I'm so busy. And I just thought I need to do something, one that will make me physically fit, but I'm not a gym person. Look at me, I'm not a gym person. No. <laughs> um, physically like fit, wrong. get me up the house and give me an hour that is just mine. And so I found a local Tai Chi class. And off I toodled, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. <laughs> and of course with my dyslexic brain and trying to get the two parts working together, it was just hilarious. And it still is hilarious. <laughs> because it is the development, it's Tai Chi actually means supreme ultimate fist. Fist. Fist, mm -hmm. yes, and okay. it it's, comes from the martial arts, so every movement uh, is, can be traced back to a Kung Fu or you know um, any martial art that's out there. But with Tai Chi, you're bringing it into that really slow, slow, slow motion. So you you know you're you're repeating all these beautiful warrior moves but in a very slow, very rhythmic, very calm way. And whilst you're doing all that, you're toning up your muscles, you're toning up your breathing, you are going into a meditative space, mm. and you're um, really working your joints. Because it's quite fluid, isn't it? It's very fluid. Mm. And you know when you know, the class all gets through. Sometimes our class can be over thirty people in there, mm. and when we're all, when you know when Jan sets us up and she'll go right forty one Sun style Tai Chi, and all thirty people just spark off into this rhythmic poetry motion, and you know poetry in motion. It's just the most beautiful thing to see. It's beautiful. So who benefits from Tai Chi then? Who's who's it good for? Everyone. 
everyone, everyone. You don't need to be uh, supremely uh, athletic or agile as long as you're willing to learn, be really patient with yourself because it's a lot to learn. And in the Soon style, which we do, there's 41 fluid movements in one set. So, you know, that takes a lot to learn, whether it's pushing the tiger, waving your hands, you know, catching the sparrow by the tail, playing the as lute, you do. as you do. <laughs> so there's all of these names. It's a bit like um, square dancing. You know, you've got to recognise the names and then recognise the sequence that relate to that name. But what you do build up is muscle memory, uh, flexibility. You do go into a beautiful meditative space. You are building up beautiful chi which is the flow of energy around your body. And you do come away knowing that you've done a workout for an hour, mm. feeling really refreshed, and you're just, your whole persona feels um, enlivened by it. So anybody, anybody can do it. I have to say there are some really amazing older ladies in our group. Oh, They're that's fabulous. Very cool. mm. Ailments, would mm. it suit, I don't know, diabetes or? Yeah. Well, there are uh, Tai Chi movements for the diabetes, you know, diabetes itself, arthritis, rheumatism, and I read online um, there's also a form for Parkinson as well. There's five different forms of Tai Chi. The diabetic uh, form, it's really lovely, it's very simple, and there's 24 sequences, 24 uh, movements in that particular one, and you your little kick and a little star, and you know, <laughs> And you're, you know, you're, you're again getting the energy, this internal energy. So it's the movement of the muscles, the breathing that goes in with all of that, mm. and being, you know, internally aware of getting that energy into, you know, that particular uh, aspect of your health. So, you know, don't hold back. In fact, it would probably be really good for people with diabetes if they're able if they're physically able even just to go along and try it give it a go and see how they would benefit from just doing it once a week how do we find a group well i just looked up tai chi and found uh just online i just mm. found lincoln um event center has it jan my tutor she does a free class in the Botanic Gardens on a Friday morning, weather permitting. Mm -hmm. So you can pop along and see Jan, she's got another tutor there. Um, at 10 o'clock in the morning, you don't need to be experienced. If you just want to go along and watch, they go along and watch. If you want to go along and give it a go, do your waving hands in the air, washing the table. Washing the table, <laughs> washing the table. You can do this with the children, yeah, washing the windows. Yeah, washing the, the windows. <laughs> and just breathing. She'd be delighted to see you. And of course, she can tell you there's groups okay. in Lincoln. All Good on you, Phyllis. We might have to get you up doing a demo next time. <laughs> hey, thank you for joining me today. Have a great night and we'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to Marion. My name is Katie. And my name is Elizabeth. Marion is a Catholic secondary school for girls which combines a strong special character with a high academic standard. We'd love to show you around our amazing school so you can see what it's like to be part of the Marion magic. Our Catholic special character is the backbone of our college. It's who we are and how we come together. It's really important because we celebrate different masses like different feast days and we also have an assembly every Tuesday and we have a short prayer time during that and I think special character suits us apart from other schools. We also look at the values of Catherine McCauley and Mary McKillop who were the founders of our school. Tell me about the campus ministry program at Marion. Well, as well as the masses and liturgies that we have at Marion, we also have lots of other fun events as well, like religious retreats and car washes and fundraisers, feast day, and um, recently we did a lemonade stand to um, say thanks to the girls for their hard work and to brighten up everyone's days. How did you find the transition from your primary school to Marion? The transition to Marion College was exciting for me because I was ready to challenge myself in many ways and develop new friendships. Tell me about peer support. I loved peer support. It really made coming into Year 9 less frightening and helped me get to know everyone. It feels like you're in a wee family where they get behind you and encourage you to strive for the best of your learning ability. 
I like how everyone knows each other and how we like one big family together. When do leadership opportunities start at Marion and what different types are available? Well at Marion we're very fortunate to have leadership opportunities available at Year 9 and these include Health Council, Environmental Group and the Special Character. And these prepare us for Year 12 and 13 where we can join the Student Executive. At Marion we have some brand new science labs and some pretty cool equipment. How would you describe the teaching and learning at Marion? I think it's really fun because there's lots of practical activities and everyone participates in class. This is Year 9 Digital Technologies. What are some of the different ways that you use technology at Marion? At Marion College, we have full access to wireless internet throughout the day. We are able to access digital technology rooms for learning purposes and project information. In this generation, I think it is important to have that access. It makes learning easier. We're here in a Year 10 Social Studies class. There's so many cultural groups for our girls to be part of at Marion College, including our school choir. Theatre sports is a big part of Marion. We have senior and junior teams that meet each week and take part in competitions. Here is one of our fantastic music groups at Marion, the rock band. This is our awesome, inspiring art room. What are some of the different things you've studied in art so far and which have been your favourite? We've done shading, watercolour and acrylic and my favourite one has probably been the acrylic and watercolour. Our library has fantastic resources and very friendly librarians. Here's a Year 9 Maths class. Marion girls love playing sport. We have a huge level of participation over a wide variety of sports. At Marion, Religious Studies is taken from Year 9 through to Year 13. What are some of the interesting things you've done in Religious Studies? Well, a girl in our class is going to the Philippines for a parish and she's going to go teach dance for the least fortunate. So we've been making cards and bookmarks and posters and stuff so she can give them to them. At Marion, we do service. Why do we do this? Uh, service is one of our Marion values and it's a great way to give back to the community. How would you describe Marion to girls thinking of coming here? Marion is such a warm and friendly school. It's just, it's honestly so great. They're so welcoming when we first arrive. Thanks for watching. We hope we'll see you at Marion soon. Come and be part of our amazing school. All in, he said. I could sense them in the distance. The rattle of the ball. The snap of the cards. A whisper of romance. A laugh. Some were serious. Some were excited. But it was an easy call. Correct.